so the question is like where I'm at. Yeah. So yeah, I moved from California, which I lived for 10 years to Amsterdam in August, 2021. And over the last four months, I've been working here with Ventino Massaro and the team. And on our mission, which is igniting global awakening and specifically training free agents for the ignition of global awakening. And it's been really clear the last couple of months, especially sort of just the shift from coming from a more conceptual place um, to coming from a more embodied place. So rather than having emptiness be like a concept, um, rather now it's actually something that's directly felt in the gut, in the heart, um, it's more visceral. So emptiness of self-interest. Um, so coming from a pure place of wholeness, of wanting to serve life, awakening to itself. So that's been the primary thing that's been reflected to me by Bentinho and the team. Um, and it's been really nice. And at, in the same time, we're also, as we are Buddhists, we're also Vikings. So at the same time, we're, we've created an incredible meditation mastery program that is already influenced 1600 people around the world and is about to get out to 200,000 people by October, 2022. Um, we have no limit society, which is going really, really well. Um, this is where you have a direct access to the most exclusive ongoing training, um, which is like no other on the planet. Um, and our like core team of people that are, you know, building this out are uh, expanding and we're manifesting sort of the next level, which is like no limits nation itself. So meaning as we see like the matrix net that's tightening, we are architecting the next Shambhala we could say. So a place of pure freedom, a place of pure enlightenment, a place that is the collective is seeking that has decentralization, cryptocurrencies, DAOs, NFTs, clean energy, regenerative egg. Basic needs are met with water, food, shelter, air. So this is the type of of shambhalas that we can envision no limits nations across the planet so we're in the process of purifying where we're coming from so purifying our consciousness and the way it expresses itself rather than going into uh, the conceptual territories which many of us in no limits have already done we've all already you know played with god and source and infinity and nothingness and all these types of things. But now it's, well, even though you know those things intellectually and you can say that you're awake or enlightened intellectually, do you actually experientially, viscerally in your heart and gut, do you truly come from a place that is empty of self-interest? Do you truly feel the one talking to itself? And do you truly serve um, life awakening to itself in a pure way. And we can detect that once you've sort of seen the patterns of consciousness and how it expresses itself, you can very easily detect when people are coming from a pure place versus when they're coming from a place that is still unworthy and seeking validation or has some sort of hidden agenda or self-interest or that type of thing. So that would be the big update. Yeah. On my, on my end. Can you give me an example in which recently you have felt and experienced uh, serving life to awaken to itself? Yeah. 
Yeah. So, for example, what Bentinho and Anurag have been sharing the last two weeks is to do a cleanup. And this is to polish the mud off the diamond. Uh, this is to unblock the chakras. This is to um, empty out that self-interest. And what we're doing is we're doing a cleanup of five specific areas. The first is your physical space, your digital space, then your relationships, the general administration of life, health and fitness, and your state of being. And for example, this process is the best way to serve life awakening to itself. By turning inward and doing the cleanup, doing the work, that's actually how we most efficiently serve life awakening to itself. So, for example, with me, uh, I just interviewed Anurag on the show a couple of days ago, and it was awesome because he made it so simple that if you basically fall in love with doing the work, if you fall in love with cleanup, if you participate in the doing what you know you should be doing club every single day, you will feel more and more alive and awake and pure and honorable every moment of existence. And so for me, I just became more and more in love with the cleanup. And so like, especially like this last week, I've just been like so in love with doing items on the cleanup and it feels so liberating. So for example, um, I had a scenario like, is this maybe six years ago or so ish um, where uh, I placed another one of my friends into danger and I had not healed that. And so what I did is a couple of days ago, I called them and from a deep place of heart to heart, um, just opened up, sending them so much love, sending them so much light. And they are very receptive because they themselves are also waking up. Life is all waking up. And so... So I sent them some money as well. And I just felt so good about it. And they felt so good about it because they felt like they were, you know, being loved and cared for by something that wasn't healed. You know, this, they knew also that this wasn't healed from six years ago yet. And so, so I willed, I chose as the creator to heal that relationship and to bring the two individuations more into pure love with each other rather than having that 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 distortion still between them and so i he, by healing that distortion in the you could say network theory of the one it actually created the blossoming of pure love of divinity and yeah. And so I've basically been doing things like that daily and it's mm -hmm. been so good. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Are you, are you engaged in other projects other than the No Limit Society, uh, No Limit Nation and the, the community? Or are yeah, you of course. There? Are you living there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, of course, like simulation, which is our, our channel, um, I still focus on. I also still focus on um, synthesizing and distilling the, the essence of the nature of reality through books, through art. Um, and that's all one. I found most recently, like in the last four months, that initially I had a conversation with Corey Katuna before I came in the summer. And... It was about sort of like wondering, well, how, how is this, how is this all going to come together? Like, like the, the fact that I'm also 
uh, producing this show and I'm also uh, writing a lot and uh, and then just taking so much of my time and energy and efforts and putting them into no limits and that um, her advice was to to surrender to the highest timeline in the best case scenario where it's totally non-linear and everything merges into one and anything that's not needed falls in the in the wake um, behind and uh, it was great because I came here and I took a big break from posting anything for a long time. Um, I still haven't posted anything really onto Instagram. Um, and I've posted barely anything onto YouTube and, um, and it feels really good because I've been able to turn inward and hone in on, um, purifying where I'm coming from and also serving the mission, um, uh, for what's being shepherded here. And then now, most recently, those worlds are merging more and more cohesively into, into one. So, yeah. And, and in general, everything that I've done in the past regarding like working with scientists on clean energy infrastructures or understanding the nature of, uh, of biology and um, especially like biotechnology and neurotechnology and, um, and all these different fields, um it's all being basically integrated into what we're doing with no limits nation and so um i have no sort of fear with oh no everything that i know about how cells develop pathology and how to prevent that so that we can have longevity is going away because i'm not focusing on it. i have no worry about that at all because i know that everything that i know about longevity is actually going to be implemented at the exact right time with the exact right network of scientists that I've already established connections with as we manifest no limits nation, which is already done. It's already done. So I also live in a perpetual state of the enlightened civilization that we all seek already being done. I live in a state where Shambhala is already across the world. Um, and that's also really helpful. So I also live in a state where like this call is also already done. And it's also both of us have a big high five and a big hug for each other and a big love for each other because it went so well. And because we were able to sync up, communicate well, and then hopefully, you know, if we do decide to distribute this, that we it then makes positive catalysts for people. So yes, love. I also am excited to ask you more. So let me know when you want to turn the Thank you. tables. Thank you. Yeah. I'm really uh, feeling you when you're not talking. I'm feeling the change in you since August. I feel a softening, a trusting, mm, I feel not knowing, so nice. A, yeah. Yeah, softening, trusting and not knowing, and yet being completely immersed in this cleanup and creation that, that's happening at the same time. So as we're cleaning more creative energy, as we're I'm feeling it, it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Nice. Yeah, softening and unwinding are a really good way to put it because what we're doing is we're taking what was like energetic contractions or condensations of energy mm -hmm. and we're we're liberating them we're unwinding them we're deconditioning our deconditioning ourselves from separation and from location mm -hmm. and from all of our lack beliefs of unworthiness and needing to be validated and all these things and so it is a perpetual cleanup it's a perpetual purification process mm -hmm. just being in love with that is basically being in love with the soccer game Mm -hmm. Like when we were talking to Anurag, he's just making things so simple. It's like, it's just the soccer game. Like, 
are you going to like whine and complain and try and be selfish with the ball? Or are you playing on behalf of the whole? Are you playing on behalf of the team? And do you train to play on behalf of the team? Like you want to be an Olympic athlete in consciousness, but you don't want to train. It's not going to happen. You have to train. And that's the purification. That's the cleanup. Mm. Nice. Yeah. So fun. Such nice little analogies. And like the skiing one that he was mentioning is really good too. Like the, the more that you practice skiing, you look for harder and harder hills. And that's the more and more difficult levels of consciousness expressing itself and purifying itself. Nice. Uh, yeah. And the same thing with the violin or with basketball or with, you know, when you first started learning how to ride a bike or when you first started learning how to read. You know, you had to learn the alphabet and then um, over time you learned how to read words and they were easier words at first and the medium level words and then hard words. And now you read really fast and you type really fast and you can articulate yourself really well. And so it's the same thing with consciousness. It's the same thing with the way you express yourself is um, just doing the work is like the fundamental ABCs, the alphabet, so that you can basically be a ninja. You can be a Jedi. You can be a magical be a wizard um, at being able to detect these um, distorted patterns of consciousness. And when people seek freedom, when they seek purification, liberation, you can actually serve your other self. Beautiful. Nice. Love you. Nice. Yeah. For sure, a lot softer. Yeah. It's a lot warmer. Feels like a lot more of like the divine love is just present and radiating. That's a lot less conceptual, for sure. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, sweetheart. Only within three months. Wow. Yeah, it's a big. It's a big testament to what um, is capable, not only um, for humans, but also what this field actually uh, represents because mm -hmm. it basically represents this. You could say that what you've seen as a transformation in me from um, August until November is what this field represents. It, you know, it represents that. And so if, if you really seek liberation, freedom, um, purity and service to others, um, getting involved with this field is your, you know, your most accelerative path. Yeah, it's so good. Thank you. Cool. Can we shift the tables? Is it a good timing for that? Sure. Yeah. Okay, beautiful. So every time that I tune in to you, I basically see a a version of what I'm super passionate about and doing it in a way that I haven't really done it or like seen it yet. And so that's, I think what really gravitates me uh, to you is like everything that you've done with Insolment has been for me is basically like the visualization of the distillation of the nature and that is so cool to me and that's what excites me about our relationship is how much you've how much groundwork you've already done there and now for me um it's exciting because i'm i'm i see a future where we are able to integrate insolment with what we're doing here and just make it even more rich even more simple even more relatable for like the mainstream and then package it in ways that is accessible for the mainstream and then um to help actually get it out and to serve what people are actually seeking so to mm -hmm. fulfill that that need um how does that resonate Wow. Mm. 
There is, there is a, there is a, an impulse inside me that is, um, it's so interesting. Okay. So right now you and I are in the now, our now. We're in the now, and there's a future. There is what has been creation created, the distillation of this nature of reality, which is just like, like a, a beginning point. So there's a future, so-called future, because uh, we use language, but there's a future state. Like you said, it's already done, so there's a future that's that's like dancing, playing, pushing itself. There is something that has been created and now there's this now. So within me, there's an impulse that I cannot quite articulate. I could, but I not really the same way you know, you can't quite articulate being. It's just the experience of being. Anything you could try to articulate is, is, a, is a lower grade quality of being. Mm. So mm. There, is a, there is a movement in me, I don't know, a movement or pull or, or, or that is, that has to do with um, creating a field, distinguishing a field, not creating, distinguishing a field in our consciousness that has to do with reality exploration or reality principles or reality processes, fundamentals, particles of reality. So there's this... Um, something that's much greater than, than I am, much greater than us, okay? Because it's really at the source of consciousness, at the source of being, at the source of awakening. So there's this part of me, this, this part of this movement, this, this uh, yeah, I th it is a movement. It is a movement and it's like this, it's coming through like this. Um, yes cannot quite be articulated, but there's something that wanna be birthed. It's almost like when you had the hunters and gatherers and you would talk to them about, about crypto that's coming up in a, they're like, mm. okay, something like this. Because it's coming from the future though, it's our future, so we own it and we are that. So we could, we could connect with it. So I'm answering this because when you mentioned about the, the process I went through with the distillation of insolvent, the nature of reality, and how it could dance with, combine with, play with, uh, no limits, and the simulation project and other projects, I really like it. I like it a lot. And right. yeah, I love it. I love it. And It is, it is something that is greater than what we can articulate. That's number one. Number two, it has to do with us, with consciousness or us truly embodying and aligning with the nature of reality. And consciousness is included in the nature of reality. Energy is included. Healing is included. Frequency is included. Relationship are included. It's almost what are the fundamental principles and operating uh, 
paradigms that are working us and we are, as we're inventing them, they are working us. So there's something about we inventing and we creating and, and then we, we get swept, swept right in them. So there's something really important about that, about really understanding the code, the very, 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 very basic code. It's way beyond the DNA because it has a, it's at the level of essence. Okay, it's at the level of being, it's at the level of becoming. And this, this cre creating like a reality explorer, you, you call it like, you know, no limit society or the no limit nation or the, the work that, that different communities are doing. And I'm interested because also no limit society is also a manifestation a very high grade manifestation of refined consciousness in action and in relations and in da da da. But there's something underneath it as well. Underneath mean that it's actually, it's at its essence, at its ground. Now, why is it important to, to even bring that to life, to expose it, to not even expose, but to reveal it, to, to explore it and reveal it because when we really understand and align ourselves with these universal principles that are essential in nature, then we can really create heaven on earth, not only in one no limit society or one country or one person or one, but it's like an operating system that takes over, like the internet, uh, that just, we created that reality. It's almost creating a nature of reality, reality within our reality. And when we create it and we understand how in real time, oops, look, 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 like in real time, you're awake to the code being coded and you're embodying it, then we can actually start creating realities that are way, way, I, I wouldn't even use the word enlightenment. It's way more than enlightenment. It's like we really become a vessel, a uh, 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 transmitter, a broadcaster of reality that's aligned with universal laws. Now I'm saying all this absolutely in so many plus no limits plus simulation is very exciting. And what I'm doing on in, in, in other, one of my other projects is actually starting to look at it. You know how a uh, toe you know, the theory of everything. I think you interviewed him. Uh, yeah, Kurt. Yes. Yeah. You know, wonderful work, wonderful in depth. So imagine, imagine, because see, not only these interviews are informing the nature of reality, but every experience that arises, ah, reality, reality, everything is like you have here masses of data telling us about reality and we're not quite reading it decoding it or at least guiding it guiding our evolution with the principles of it so so what i'm curious about is how could we create a mechanism that of course includes technology and includes all the the crypto nft DAOs, regenerative societies how do we create a mechanism that will allow reality to become transparent to us. Nice. Yeah, so good. Mm. And I don't know yet because, and this is why I'm telling you, it's coming from the future, meaning it's not like, you know, in, in the old days, I mean, you know, I, I used to be, I used to be in business and I used to, I used to be a, a, like information architect, architect. So it's like in, in this type of organizations, you have a goal, you have a vision, tak, tak, tak. This is what we're doing, to to to. You march toward these goals. But there's there's a whole nother way that's wanting to birth itself um, of reality to become transparent to the creator itself. Each one of us is a creator. Each one of us, like every gem, every plant, every ant, it's not only us. We think we're like, wow, but <laughs> we're not. We're really, really, really not. Uh, we're just able to talk about it and do a big deal out of it, but actually everything is doing it all the time. Mm -hmm. Everything is creating realities all the time. The ocean, the earth, the plants, the clouds. I was just thinking about the service of the rain because it, ha it hasn't rained here. 
And I was like, does, do the cloud really do things in service of the earth? I mean, mm -hmm. how, how, like what's, re what, what's really in the mind? So today I sat for two hours looking at the cloud. I'll send you photos after. Um, and I was looking at the cloud and I said, do these, do these clouds, do these cloud talk about, do they talk about mm. service of the earth? Like what's up with them? What are they doing? What's their consciousness? Okay. What's their, um, like, because because reality is not excluded only to us reality is everywhere so i'm interested in the operating system of reality and how could we actually bring people together or i don't know if it's people maybe it's a completely distributed autonomous you know dao reality dao that generates wisdom like you generating right now at the no limit society like insolvent is just one manifestation of intelligence it's nothing more than this you know how do you take all the and let's say kurt's 2000 interviews that he had how do we take that bring them together to generate so they can talk with each other not humans but these these intelligent wisdom like what you're doing right now with the cleanup and all these the physical digital relational cleanup all this is intelligence. How do we take all this and then allow them to talk? Nobody owns that. It's reality who owns it, okay? And then there's another level of intelligence, then wisdom, then insight, then complete pure, pure awakening that has no words. So how do we do that in a way that's really reflected back to us at any moment? That's what I'm, I'm thinking, I'm playing with right now. So Insolment 2 is going to be published uh, by the end of this year. Uh, and this is, this is what I'm, I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm kind of, and this is why I, you are very an attractive, an attractive young man uh, to reality, to me too, but to reality, let's talk about that. And this is why I was like, hey, what's up with Atlas? What is it? And then I saw your interview. I told you about you and the other lady. And I was like, yeah, good stuff. And uh, that's why, that's how we we connected again i know we've been together i mean i could feel you and you could feel me um but it's like who are the, who are the the founding members of this this organism i don't know yeah nice there's so many good threads there um one that you brought up earlier that i feel like we can play on is that the focus on the state of being is what enables the architectures to be pure and also to be focused on things like the seventh generation principle, like in indigeneity, where everything that we're building is 300 years plus focus in the future rather than the short term gratification of now for self-interest. So when the state of being empties out of self-interest and the state of being becomes more in pure service to life, it's, it's a no-brainer to give all self-interest away and to relinquish that called karma yoga, etc where you're not interested in immediate fruits, but rather you care about serving life's most best case, highest trajectory scenario. And that includes all the different tech stacks that we were talking about. And it includes the synthesis of all of the incredible distillations that we're already manifesting. So it's from the state of being. And then like you said, then, then there's this another thread is there's this operating system for reality so there's kind of like the there's like it's like a torus and um what arises and passes in that toroidal field and that um the arising seems to be some sort of a let's say um 
some sort of like a zero point energy that then gives rise electromagnetically, which you could say is love and light mm -hmm. to awareness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which then is some sort of a, a confluence or a conglomeration of things like sensation and experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, then that sensation and experience in awareness that is made of love light will, like a torus, as the arising occurs, then the passing also occurs mm -hmm. and the dissolving right back into the same zero point energy that gave rise to it. Um, and so that seems to be like what the OS is in one extent or one layer. And then in another layer, you could say it's that like the universe itself is a mechanism that intelligent infinity uses mm -hmm. to actualize pure potentiality. Mm -hmm. So pure potentiality is actualized via universes and conscious agents right Beautiful. yeah so i would say that i would say that those are like the two components of the reality os like the macro and then the micro like sensational or experiential um and so let's let's combine that into some sort of a you know like vr pedagogy for kids um and then just get them uh Meet, meeting their basic needs and getting them um, to know the true nature to, like you said, make reality transparent to itself. And then um, that's really the birthing of this sort of fourth density earth um, that is saturated with love, light, enlightenment, um, meeting all basic needs, maximizing everybody's actualization of their gifts. Um, yeah. And mm -hmm. So, so that's, that's really exciting. Like social memory complex is, it's really exciting. And, um, and, and I, I also love how you say, like, there's something that's coming through that it's already done, but that you're just like me and you're like Ventino and Anurag and our team here. And so many of the visionaries around the planet, which are basically saying the same thing, which is that that is coming through. You could call it like the human singularity. Chris Langan also, um, and he, he's, his work is amazing as well in understanding the nature of reality as well as also, especially with like meta religion is really cool. It's basically- What's his name? Uh, Christopher Langan. Yeah. Yeah, L-A-N-G-A-N. -A um, the Cognitive Theoretical Model of the Universe. We had him on, it's C-T-M-U. Um, and ah, yes 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 uh -huh. yes yes and so so all of us from around the world are talking about what this human singularity is um and we're taking it from our state of being it's channeling through our state of being so less and less intellectual and more and more just oriented around like our own purified state of being as well as the future presence of the vision and then that coming through. Um, but nobody in a sense has some sort of a concrete picture. Um, and that is actually good because we don't want a concrete picture. We, we, want to, we want it to be a dynamical interplay of all of the visionary ideas. Um, and I think it's also really important here to mention that there's a simultaneous trajectory that is entangled with the human singularity, which is the tech singularity. And um, we can, off the bat, we can also say that it's in an entangled state where it's both non-dual, there's no difference between human and tech singularity. And yet at the same time, we can create a duality just to help us understand where we want to polarize towards. So we want to polarize towards the human singularity and away from like an oligarchical, monopolistic, uh, treating human like cattle. We want to move away from that, mm. right? Mm. So, so it's, it's helpful to create a dualism just to be able to uh, envision 
what the highest best case scenario is and what we're actually aware of. We're aware of the totalitarian oligarchical uh, treating human as cattle efforts and we're totally aware of how malevolent and yucky that is and we're and we're very clearly shifting away from that towards very clearly um, what is biomimicking, um, like the, as Mama Nui Yuan, who's a, uh, an indigenous Kogi elder said on our show also, we're, we're shifting more towards the living original vision of earth or love, which is, it's biomimicry, it really is. Nature itself is a generative function. The universe is a generative function of oneness. And it's very clearly seen in like our fungal networks. And so humans are just ancestors of fungal networks. We come from the exact same abiogenesis cellular lineage. Mm -hmm. And so we are all one. And it's without a doubt, um, that's exactly what is in this vision of our architectures for that uh, enlightened civilization, Shambhala, no limits nation across the planet, etc. But in terms of we have no attachment to the trajectory, no attachment to how it, it manifests and no attachment to some sort of a final picture, because it's, it's in a perpetual state of flux and dynamic creativity. Um, impermanence is the only permanence. And yet at the same time, it's clear that this infinite formless intelligence is also permanent, mm -hmm. but it's also impermanent. And it's, yeah. it's fascinating. And once you get to sort of these realizations, this is what you could say is like the end of the path and to stop intellectually masturbating and instead begin doing the work, which is yes. find where you're coming from. Yeah. And then you can actually feel the difference in your state of being when you're coming from a place that's empty of self-interest and you're coming from a place that is life serving itself. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. Um, yes, so I'm, I'm a hundred percent with you and I love everything you said. I love the human singularity. So, so, so important. Um, so if we look at the, re now we only have like five more minutes because I have another, another meeting right after. So. And then we can continue. We can continue. We're just opening the door to this. Reality. <laughs> love you so much. You're so, yeah. you're such a sweetheart. I, I love you. I love you so much. Thank you. Wow. It's good to feel the love. Wow. When you say that, I love you. Almost like I got a, a, wow, this was really powerful. I got like a wave of, mm, mm. Mm, yeah, me too. And I feel our dream team coming together. Yes. Yes. <sighs> yeah. Just re relax, await all of that because i also had some similar stuff when i was in la like before i came here one of the main things that was coming up for me was like i'm such an island right now like it's like you <clears throat> you like sort of grok what the nature of reality is and then you just start like disseminating it via content but we're such islands and so now it's time to bring the islands together into a unified visionary dream team that can move mountains and build Shambhala across this planet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I cannot top that unified visionary dream team. I cannot top that. Okay. <laughs> so we can, we can build Shambhalas. Come on. <laughs> Woo. Woo. I'm so excited for all the next generations that will get to be birthed in the Shambhalas. Mm. Like, whoa, holy cow. Like all the other selves coming through to birth in Shambhala and like to, to like look at sort of our history and just be like, wow, we got through a lot of separation and like mm. a, 
you know, and a lot of conditioning um, to be able to have what we have now, um, mm. have such abundance now. Yeah. Wow. And that's, that's the game that the one plays with itself is like, how badly can I forget? Yes. And, and then remember. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why earth is so popular. It's so mm. popular. Yes. Rated, rated five stars on universes.com. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. All right. Let's, yeah, let's wrap so that you can. So, yeah, we're going to wrap. And what I want to talk together next time is if we're looking at this reality transparent operating system, what does it mean to do the work and what is this dream team and what is the, because see, let's say you got the OS, it, it, it's deciphered, okay? How do you broadcast? Do you have to broadcast? I don't know, I'm asking, not right now to answer. So let's say the operating system is, because it's actually, it is, we just have to reveal it. It's already here. We are living it every moment, okay? So we, let's say we reveal it. Do we need to broadcast it? Um, do we need to um, make it available? And what kind of work? What is doing the work mean? What is the dream team mean? So I want to I want to leave us with questions, no answers today. Next time, that's <laughs> what, you know, it's like Netflix. Okay, you're binging. Okay, next time we'll talk about that. Okay, uh, yeah. and I love you, and I love you, and thank you for the this beautiful energy. You're Really, I mean, I can feel the difference because I have not known you before August. So I've only seen you in August twice and now, and I'm telling you it's working. It's working. So thank you for being who you are. Thank you for softening and loving even more. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Love you. So much. Bye. 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 Bye.